Can I do one? Okay. Um, this is a sweet poem. Uh, here's like the idea behind it, and mm -hmm. then we'll see what we can come up with. Okay. This poem's called Political Animals, hmm. and it's based on the idea that every ancient philosopher had a theory about what made humans different. Okay. That is, what, what separates humans from the rest of the animal kingdom, right? And so Socrates said what made humans different is that we have a soul and animals do not. Like we have an immortal mm. soul that goes on forever. Mm -hmm. A good idea, to be sure. So for him, I, I wrote... Uh, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I haven't read this one in a long time. Oh, yeah? Okay. So it okay. says, Socrates explains to the men of Athens that a human being is what happens when an animal is given a soul. And if you really know that you are capable to care for it and grow it to the full, you will be a king of virtue among the animals, immoral goodness, and self-control, a new race of... Human animals. Humanimals. And uh, that's kind of Socrates' theory that's on awesome. what sets us apart from the beasts or the uh -huh. animals. Yeah. Plato disagrees with Socrates. Uh -huh. um, of course. The most, <laughs> the most interesting moments in, in ancient philosophy or just sage culture to me are when a student comes along and says, I know this is what I was taught. But this is what I think. This is right. It's uh, it's right. it's Yeshua, Jesus saying, "You have heard it said, but I say." Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. And I used to think, like, what audacity! Like, what student yeah. comes along and says, "No, you're completely wrong." Completely Baruch wrong. Spinoza, the Enlightenment philosopher, famously said, "Everything my teachers taught me was garbage." Uh -huh. This is what I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, I remember thinking, like, that's so bold. I would never cross like my teachers. Uh -huh. But then, as I evolved as a scholar then you I was like everything I everything I learned in seminary as a theologian I would chuck as a yeah. Bible scholar right. like, I don't even think right. ancient texts work that way uh -huh. like I don't think theology is possible yeah and so I love those moments where someone comes into their own right and yeah. says right now nah, this is how I see it now this is it right. it's it's what Robert Green the the like famous author he writes just like these tomes of like 500 page books mm -hmm. that comb uh, history and people for the greatest pieces of humanity like to aspire to. And he wrote a book called Mastery. Uh -huh. And Mastery is all about putting in the time and the apprenticeship under someone to become great. Mm -hmm. But then there being a point where you turn the corner right. and leverage the discipline towards something new. Right, you know, exactly. You, you build text and rock. Yeah. Ah, but, uh, see what he did there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Plato <laughs> disagrees with his teacher, all right? Yeah. I'll read you this first. Okay, it's, it's okay. Good. This is hot. Plato disagrees with his teacher, but always respectfully, he features humanity by necessity living together in a city. He says humanity is a political animal. Mm. We're birds of a feather who do life together in a city state so that our fate rests on our ability to participate. For Plato, yeah. what sets humanity apart from the rest of the animals is that we live in a polis. That yeah. is... We do life together. Mm -hmm. We are political animals. <laughs> uh -huh. And so as frustrated as we can get by politics and democratic debate and all these things, uh -huh. Plato says it's actually the essential thing about being human, that we survive and thrive as a species based on our ability to live in a polis, like a Greek okay. city-state where we have to make decisions as a collective. As a, as a collective, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Man, I'm going to... Oh, thanks. Move that down. I don't know if it's... Okay. There Damn we'll decent of you. <laughs> Damn uh, decent of you. So what is that from? I got one more. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Some movie, though. <laughs> Damn Something decent. hilarious. Oh, it's like, it's Dr. Doolittle where he almost steps on the ant. Oh, that's right. And, that's and right. Like, is that it? Or the bug, and the bug's like, Damn decent of you. Yeah, okay. Okay, so... We have Socrates saying what makes a human a human is that we have a soul. Mm -hmm. A good idea, probably true. Plato saying what makes a human a human is that we live in a polis together. Here's another verse. 
Or one more idea, if you'd rather, Aristotle in turn disagrees with his father and proffers this idea he offers that humans are a reasoning animal. We are able to think scenarios real and unreal and ask and test and collect and bask in the glory of the sciences and techne. That's uh, the arts of mastery that come from inquiry. So yeah. techne is an art or a discipline and Aristotle was the great first empiricist that would classify the natural world around him. Mm. He came up with the animal taxonomies, with the classifications of oh, arts oh. and sciences, oh, wow. pretty much the entire way that we seek to categorize things as mm -hmm. modern rational thinkers comes from yeah. Aristotle. Yeah. It's actually very old. Yeah. It, it, it really got dusted off in the mm -hmm. Enlightenment, but those questions about what's under the hood uh, really start with Aristotle. Yeah. Um, wow. wow. So his answer is that what makes a human different than the animals is that we can reason, mm -hmm. we can use logic, and yeah. we can come to conclusions. Yeah. And these are all good. These yeah. are all great notions, but now I'm going to tell you the one I think is best. Okay, Ready? okay. These are all good notions, and each one is a potion uh -huh. <laughs> that if you drink of its cup, we'll show you what's up. How to be human with a soul we develop or with one unified soul achieved politically or thinking our way to divinity. All of these envelope a path with sure footing on a deep space journey, but only one definition can save humanity. And it's the second of the three. The definition of humanity from an antiquity that can save us and save our world is Plato's. We have to mm -hmm. work together. We have to, we have to cooperate. Uh -huh. And politics, this is such an unpopular statement <laughs> heading into 2024. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> politics, as frustrating as it is and awful, can be the great honor of life together. Yeah and figuring out the best way possible. Yeah. But all of our ideologies and religions and assumptions about the other, that is people that we just don't tick with, we don't, that maybe yeah. we'd wish out of our world if we could, mm -hmm. yeah. our ideas about all of these things get in the way of the fundamental task of doing life of, together. Of doing life together. Huh. Yeah, man. Interesting. All right. So here's the conclusion. Okay. All right. We have to <laughs> learn life together politically, not in a sense of left and right, but in the mystic sense of wrong and right. Mm. We are the only animals that talk about justice and think about how to advance as a team. And if we become unified under this common dream, and each found our purpose and place in the advancement of the entire human race, well, then we would get to the right place. Ah, uh, yeah, so, I like so it, I like it, all it's, right. It's basically weighing those three theories and saying, yeah, they're, they're all great, they're all and they great. can all get you somewhere, Yeah, but Plato's is essential but, to yeah. us making it right. as a species, and, mm -hmm. you know, what do you think? You like yeah. it? Yeah, absolutely. Although, yeah, what you of got? course, you know what I think is that is that where 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 you say we can reason, yeah. or we're uh, 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 I think we're unreasonable, <laughs> and yeah, rash. I think we're irrational. We're ra irra yeah. I think we're <laughs> no, I I hear what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Aristotle gives humans too much in his assumption that we all use reason. Do you think? Okay, so. Uh, yeah. Here's another Robert Greene piece. In, uh, in his book, Laws of Human Nature, uh -huh. he says the truest thing about humans is we're emotional beings mm. that act irrationally all the time. Like he cuts against Aristotle. Yeah, right. Do you think that's true? Yeah. You know, I, I think like, like us as people, we, I, it, I think what we try to do is narrow things down too much and try to find what people call the, the silver bullet or whatever. I yeah. think it's larger than that. I think it's a little bit of everything because we're so different. Um, I mean, yeah. way different. And we do have to find those things, like you said, to come together, to work together within yeah. 
whatever is not harming everybody, right? What you just said is really important. Yeah. Uh, I mean, think about when you say not finding a silver bullet, these debates between Democrats and Republicans yeah. in America and the conservative and the liberal in Europe, like these kinds of debates in Western society are trying to sell a silver bullet. Right. If you take right. our system of economics mm -hmm. over this other one, yeah. it will lead to the promised land, yeah. but the other one will lead to catastrophe. Yeah. <laughs> and if you remove the idea of a silver bullet and say, what if we work together? Mm -hmm. What if we can have a system that benefits capitalism and employing people and individual responsibility and Damn. builds safety programs so that people aren't walking around homeless or starving. Right. Like, exactly. They, they don't have to be exactly. opposites that we take care of people mm -hmm. and reward responsibility, for instance. Right. 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 Yeah. 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 Um, Absolutely. By the way, if, if you find yourself watching all the debates between two parties and everyone saying there's this path or this path and you need to figure out where you fit and mm -hmm. you feel like actually I don't I don't fit in any of it like the whole discussion seems silly and outdated to me it's probably because you're a good person <laughs> I like what you did uh, there's this great scene in the yeah. the, the chosen the series about Jesus uh -huh. right? oh you told me about that yeah. I haven't started watching it's, it it's really good because as an antiquarian I've always pictured Jesus like they've depicted him in the in, in the show, yeah. like it's spot on, and yeah. so is like the the world. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's really really well done. But there's this great scene where the director has chosen to make the character of Matthew autistic, mm. and he never he's always bringing up minutia and details, and he can never see like abstract things, and it's difficult mm. for him to. Um, join in. Mm -hmm. It really is difficult for him to join in in a normal way. And one time he's talking to another disciple of Jesus named Philip and he, he draws a circle and, and Matthew draws a circle on the ground and he says, everyone in the world is operating inside of this circle and I feel like I'm right here. And he hits the ground in frustration with like the the stick he's got in his hand. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm right here on, on the outside. And Philip basically tells him, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Yeah. And like every person trying to be a genuine human feels outside of this world in right. some way. Right. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it yeah. It is. Absolutely. And wow. so don't don't settle for those <sighs> false choices of Republican or Democrat or left or right or conservative mm -hmm. or liberal. Take things an issue at a time, and most of all, have a heart that's open to seeing the humanity of people, of people in all stripes of ideas. Right, that are, yeah, completely different. Even if, wait, what was it that you had brought up? There were, there's two, two opposed uh, views, and, and like the silver bullet isn't the yeah, thing, it's right. actually cooperating. It's cooperating, right, right, exactly. I was going to say something else, but that's okay. Did that's I miss enough. it? No. <laughs> We're hilarious. I don't, I, man, oh my gosh. It just whoosh. But yeah, that's it. We're both good at getting off. <laughs> We're both good at getting off track. So when you put us together. Ah. Um, do you think, like, to me, uh, to me, that's, that's actually the Jesus way in a nutshell. It's yeah. not these magical beliefs about going to heaven when you die. Mm -hmm. It's actually that in a world of division, you see a third way or an opportunity yeah. right. of peace between the two by recognizing the full humanity and dignity of everyone around you. Right. It's beautiful. Right. Yeah. You know? Um, cool. Uh, yeah. So there's Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, Jesus, and how to be a good human. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, and also what they didn't realize back then yeah. is that um, orcas and dolphins do the same thing that we do. They, they teach each other as they're coming up. Yeah. The um, the new ways because they they've seen that they've adapted yeah. their ways of of hunting and stuff like that yeah. and they teach the younger ones it's true and as the younger ones come up if something changes then they change and then they tell the yeah 
Yeah. It's true. There, there are great examples in the animal species yeah. of the kind of cooperation that Plato's talking about. Yeah. I think he's wrong. Like when he says no other animal lives yeah. in a polis, yeah. they might do it better than we do. Right. You know? Exactly. Although orcas would eat, eat a dolphin too? if they had a chance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah I actually. Bees. Bees. I think another beautiful piece of antiquity both in the Greek philosophical tradition and in the uh, like spiritual traditions of antiquity, mm -hmm. there's this idea that nature is our teacher and that right. all the wisdom we need we can observe by looking around. Right, and right. I think you're right. I think yeah. it's totally true. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that whether or not Aristotle recognizes that in like l other animals, mm -hmm. we can and we can learn from it. Yeah, right? absolutely. All right, want to see what we can get for this one? Okay. Okay, okay. All right, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, do not try this at home. This is upside down and sideways. It's, <laughs> oh, it's like my life. It's like my life. Okay, ready? <laughs> Oh my God. All right, ready, dog? Ready. Boom. Uh, how fast are we going? Do we want to? Do you want me to start reading this one and you come in when you're ready? Sure. Okay. And then once we get a good pace, let's stop. And then we'll. Yeah. Okay. We won't make them watch us. Okay. Do Figure it, it out. Time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Ready? Okay. Yeah. 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 Socrates explains to the men of Athens that a human being is what happens when an animal is given a soul. And if you know that, you are capable to care for it and grow it to the full. You will be king of virtue among the animals in moral goodness and self-control. A new race of human animals. Plato disagrees with his teacher, but always respectfully. He features humanity by necessity living together in a city. He says humanity is a political animal. We're birds of a feather who do life together in a city state so that our fate rests upon our ability to participate together. One more idea. If you'd rather, Aristotle in turn disagrees with his father and proffers this idea. He offers that humans are a reasoning animal. We are able to think scenarios, real and unreal, and ask and test and collect and bask in the glory of the sciences and in the techne, the arts of mastery that come from inquiry. These are all good notions, and each one is a potion that if you drink of its cup, will show you what's up. How to be a human with a soul we develop, and with one unified soul achieve politically, or thinking our way to divinity. All these envelope a path with sure footing on a deep space journey, but only one definition can save humanity and it's the second of the three. We have to learn life together politically, not in a sense of left and right, but in the mystic sense of wrong and right. We are the only animals who talk about justice and think about how to advance as a team. If we become unified all under this common dream and each found our purpose and place, in the advancement of the entire human race, then we might finally get someplace. <laughs> I love that one. That was it's good. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't you tell they're like... Middle age like us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's my favorite album currently. I'm oh, going man, to that's awesome. I'm going to see it that show uh, yeah. in LA in January. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Um, let's get rolling. Yeah. yeah. Actually, okay, so my yeah. friend Steve Cox, mm -hmm. way back from college, yeah. the last year of my doctoral program, I had this really hard Latin 
um, exam and I was not good at Latin. <laughs> was, oh, you weren't? I, no, I was, I'm still not good at Latin. I've oh, been working wow. on it for like seven years and uh -huh. Greek and Hebrew are so much more solid for me. But yeah. anyways, yeah, yeah. I had this exam and Steve was like, hey, want to come see MXPX play Life in General in Seattle on their home turf oh, like man. this day and I looked at the day and it was uh -huh. the day of my exam and I was oh. like, hey, Special K, which is what I called my uh, doctoral advisor. I actually mm -hmm. had names for all of my profs, but oh, you did? never to their face. <laughs> and uh, I was like, hey, Special K, can I take this one early? Because I want to go to this show. Uh -huh. And he was like, that is not a good idea for you. And uh, I was like, but is it allowed? Like, I'm allowed to, to, like, based on the handbook, I can say I'm taking the exam early. And he was like, you can. I would not advise it. And I was just like, let it rip. I'm let doing it. it. Rip. And, let uh, it rip. Yeah. yeah. I think I got like a B minus on that exam. And in upper tier PhD programs, you don't get Bs. You, don't get Bs. you get A's. And yeah. if you get one C, you're in jeopardy of like going home. Yeah. And I got a B minus. <laughs> <laughs> totally worth it. Oh, man. Totally worth like, it. Totally it was a worth good it. punk rock show. And anyways, yeah. I'm meeting Steve now for this album and no pressure exams going on. Oh so uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, one.